<laughs> Eric Roy, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, the yeah. sausage. The sausage. Riv, was I right? Was I right about how excited you'd be about getting him on? It's unbelievable. Like I, you, <laughs> you, you, you made it sound like I love this guy more than anything. I hated Derek Roy. When I <laughs> what are you talking about? I <laughs> just kid, just kid. Good uh, to see you, Roisy. Good to see you guys. So, Roisy, are, are those your pair of skates up on the top shelf? Yeah, that was my first year in the league. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Can we can we wait on on the uh, stone busting here before we get through all the emotional <laughs> stuff? I mean, I mean, Roisy, what's what's the big news? Is it is it true or is it fake news? It's true, yeah. It's um, it's been a long ride, and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it, especially playing in Buffalo with you guys and the core group we had there. It was awesome, and um, you know. It's a lot of uh, a lot of years pro for me, and uh, you know it felt like it was time to retire. Well, thank you for coming on the show and sharing that with us. And I'm going to say the same thing to you that I said to to Milzy in his in his video. I mean, I thought you were retiring at least five years ago, but uh, you know whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Roisy, how hard was it to come to the decision? I mean, you love playing the game. I feel like you might have even loved the game in the last few years maybe more than you ever did but how hard was it for you to come to this decision or how easy was it for you to come to this decision uh i just think when you know you know i think obviously it's hard um especially when playoffs are going on right now and you're watching it and, and you're thinking of the memories that you had playing and um that that's that's the hardest part probably and and um you know being in the locker room with all the guys and i'm gonna miss that for sure but I think, uh, you know, I think, you know, I have a family and uh, I got to look after and uh, I want to spend more time with them. So I think going to Europe for nine months and, and uh, you know, not seeing my parents and, and my, my wife's parents and them not seeing the baby is, is, is tough. So um, I think, uh, you know, being here, being a family is uh, the number one thing right now. I love it. I, you know, congratulations on an amazing career. Like it was, uh, I, I'm sure that... Um, you know, you're always going to have that emotion and you're going to be thinking even way further back than, than uh, the NHL. You're going to be thinking back to your time in junior and how all that started. And it's just, there's such a long, long, enjoyable road. And then, uh, you know, for you, and, and I can, I can say this, that not all players get to retire on their own terms. And you have played a tremendous, uh, you know, a very long time. And uh, to, to think, you know, I have, I have kind of like one regret in, in and I actually, I, I really don't have any regrets at all. But if I had to want, do one thing would be to be able to play in Europe at the end of my career, to be able to experience another country, to be able to experience, you know, you played where in the KHL, the Swiss League, um, Sweden, um germany like that there you're gonna take so much from that which i i envy that you know that's something that i would love to be able to sit down and have a couple uh cocktails with you and talk about your time when you're over in europe to see what that was all about but congratulations on an amazing career bud thank you yeah like you said europe is uh you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it was a great experience for us. You know, this year we got the, Ven uh, we got the Venice, we went to Vienna, um, Modena, uh, went to Rome. So we, we like experienced like a bunch, bunch of different, uh, countries and cities and places throughout our years. And, um, in Europe with Paris, like we've, we've seen, seen a lot, a lot since we've been there. So, um, you know, we, we loved every minute of it. And those, those leagues are, are very professional and, and they're, they're great leagues. They're, they're, um, they're, they're getting a lot of youth players coming out of those leagues uh, that come to the NHL and, and, and contribute. So, um, you know, even Russia was a great, ex it was an experience in itself, you know, all these, uh, all these things, uh, you know, no, you I, learn from it. And you I, get, I heard uh, in Russia, the plane rides are the most interesting. My brother told me he had a buddy that played in Russia and he literally could, pick up his chair and turn it around as they were going down the runway. Is it still in bags were like down the aisle? Was it the same way? Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, we didn't have enough room one time on on the plane on underneath the plane. They just threw, threw hockey bags in the in the back uh, <laughs> one of the last seats and and put the seatbelt on them. So I was like looking behind me. I'm like, man. And they had like the skate sharpener back there and things. I was like, oh god. But uh, there, there was a lot of uh, FFA FA rules that uh, don't apply there. I think and. Uh, you know the the sushi on the plane was uh, was probably one thing that you don't touch. So <laughs> there was uh, <laughs> there was some good experiences there. And what was and, the uh, what was your favorite spot? So you played in Bern and in, in, in uh, Switzerland. Um, you played in the KHL in two different spots. Um, played in Sweden. Played in Germany. Was there a league that you liked the most or disliked? Um, yeah, good question. I think. Um, you know the cities itself we were in sweden we we're close to stockholm uh and in a little town called linchopen we loved it there and um and uh burn we we played there it was great um a great city great fans a uh, great place to play um we ended up winning a championship there which was uh which was awesome so um uh, and then when you go to germany munich like it's pretty hard to beat munich it's you know people go visit there on on vacations and we're walking around there rocking the city and looking at the tourists saying like we live here and everyone's just tour touring around and it's just you know it's it, it's it's an awesome experience and uh you know the, the hockey itself is a little bit different i think the, the swedish league is a little bit um, a little bit faster, a little bit uh, maybe more hardworking, and, and the Swiss league is is fast and, and offensive, and and maybe the the DEL is is uh, I think it's it's becoming a, a good league, and and uh, you know it's it just shows in the Champions Hockey League when you play. You know Munich made the finals a few years ago, and it's just it's, there's hardly uh, every team is close. There's a lot of parity in the, in the, in the, these leagues now. Instigators, WGR 550 and MSG. Our mystery guest is Derek Roy, and he announces his retirement here. If, I mean, if you're listening to the show, you follow hockey. Uh, you know who Derek Roy is. But if you're from Buffalo and you follow hockey, you absolutely know who Derek Roy is. You probably might have met him, or you definitely might have had his jersey at some point. But uh, electrifying player here, great teammate nonetheless. R- Roy, I, I got to ask you, when you're making this decision to retire – Okay, we all three of us have made this decision, and every player in the league are going to have to come to that point. Was there fear involved? Was there like, what's your after hockey plan? Not plan, but just I guess plan. I mean, do you have any idea? Do you want to get involved in the game? Do you have business interests away from hockey? I mean, what what does Derek Roy want to do now that that he doesn't have to worry about staying in shape and his body fat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to still try to stay in shape and keep my body fat down. I think, uh, you know, uh, I think I'd, I'd like to stay in the game. I think, uh, you know, I bring a lot of knowledge to the game. I like being around the game. I like learning. I think, uh, even at, at whatever age, you know, you can always learn and, and get better and, and, uh, you know, become, a you know, become a positive influence in, in young people's lives. And I think, when I when I was working out with Gary Roberts here in Toronto and and seeing all the young guys and, and going in there every day and seeing the work they put in and um, you know made me feel younger and made me uh, you know work just as hard as them and whatever little uh, thing I can um, point out or or uh, help them out I I tried to do that as best as I could and I felt like that was um, you know that was my role when I probably around the age when you hit 30 32 that's when you started thinking hey I gotta you know, give back and, 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 and try to, you know, give these kids a, a little bit of insight on what I know of the game and, and how to make them better and how to, how to make them succeed. And I think I did that throughout Europe and, and stuff. I was playing with uh, JJ Paterka in uh, Munich last year. And, and uh, I know he's a Buffalo draft pick and, and uh, I just yeah. want to help him out as, as much as I could. And, and uh, you know, you know, he said, thank you. And every time, and he would listen and, and, and work at his skill and, and that's uh, for me. Watching him score goals after that is is rewarding for sure. Well, he's he's highly touted right now, very highly yeah. spoken of. I mean, he's he's been having a good year. Yeah, you know, he's how a, he's far a great away player. is he? Uh, how far away is he from uh, getting an opportunity to play in the NHL? I think uh, I think a little development in the uh, the AHL never hurts. I think uh, you know if he can get there and 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 score goals and put up points and and learn how to play defense. Uh, and a smaller ice surface and, and things like that. It's just, it's a different game when you're coming from Europe, right? 
um, you know, playing playing big minutes and stuff. But he's, uh, you know, he's got speed, he's got skill, and you know, he works hard. He's he's the last guy off the ice every day, so it's uh, that's a good thing to see. So when you when you say you want to get back into hockey, you and stay in hockey actually, not get back into, but stay in hockey. You didn't say NHL. I mean, like I I could see Derek Roy. I I don't know. I hate to speak for you, but buying into a junior team and something like that, or working in, in the OHL or with young kids. I mean, is the NHL your, your goal now, Roisy? Like, is that you want to get, get coaching there, player development, skill development, something like that? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a possibility. Obviously uh, it doesn't hurt to uh, work your way from the bottom and, and try to get up. Like you said, that work in the OHL or something like that. So I said, buy um, an OHL team, Roisy. I didn't say work. <laughs> in, I said, buy an OHL team. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, I think, uh, at this point we're going to sit down as a family and discuss, uh, you know, what the, what the next move is and, and how many days am I away from home and things like that. So, um, you know, from this, this whole pandemic, uh, being at home with, with the family, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of been a blessing for us because we get to spend as much time with the little one as possible. Could there be a Roy residence back in Buffalo at some point? Yeah, you never know. You never know. Aren't there still ties for you here? Is is your wife from here? Yeah, uh, it's pretty pretty big ties. My brother lives there as well. My wife. Oh, that's from right. Your Buffalo. brother's here too. I I knew yeah. he was here. I didn't know he was still here. Your brother's here too. Roy, yeah, come married, on. He's married with uh, with a kid there, and um, you know my wife's parents are still there, and her brothers and sisters and stuff are still there. So, um, yeah, it's you know there's could be a possibility. I'll be a house hunting for you there, Roisy. <laughs> Roisy, there's, there's, Roisy, there's got to be a rib. There's got to be a place on on your street for sale. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. You at least move somebody out of the neighborhood. Derek That's Roy it. joining us here on the Instigators as he announces his retirement. How many years pro was it, Roisy? How old are you now? Thirty-eight. So Two eighteen years up. pro. Eighteen yeah. years. Any well, regrets? Tom, half, Tom Askey I wants to know. He's he just texted me. He said, "Tell Roy that we're getting the band back together." He said, three beers down," was the band name. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's let's go. Who was in? Who, who was in that? Who was in that band? It was you, Tom, Askey, M- Millsy. Yeah. Am and I missing Steve one of them? Steve Lingren, Yeah. And did you guys? I know Riv. They had a band in the minors. Okay, they had a they had a team band, and they would. Did you guys? Did you guys not go and play at bars and stuff? Yeah. So what happened is you got like, hired I, for gigs. Did you not? Yeah. So what happened oh was when I when I when I first got there, I wanted to buy a drum set because I've always wanted one, and I knew how to play because my buddy taught me how to play. So I was like, you know what? I'm going out buying drum sets today. So I bought one set up, set up in my basement, and then I went to the rink the next day and told the guys and they were like well steve lingren's like i've been playing drums for like 18 years man he's like let's jam and then mills he's like i just started picking up the guitar about six months ago and then tom askey came over and he's like i've been playing guitar for 18 years so it was just like well i guess we got a band <laughs> let's let's get some beers and start jamming tonight so you know everyone came over to the house and then lead singer <laughs> We did it once. We did it once a week, and then we got we got a set list going, and then we'd show up and play at uh, bars on around the uh, around the city. And the guys on the team would go, and they would be in the audience, Riv. Yeah, I, the, the whole team the would the whole team would go because it's the minors. So everybody much up my alley. It's ridiculous. Oh, we had guys like, hey, I want to be the bouncer. Hey, I want to be this and that. And then so we would just go there and jam between sets. There was a uh, a band that um, that we would play between their sets we'd get like 15 20 minutes to kind of like jam out all our best songs so it was uh it was good times so amazing so t-bone listens to the show so say hi to t-bone what's up t-bone he, he's he's a big instigator fan he's, but not on, only t-bone. that he's a huge sabers fan right because he's from buffalo so he yeah. listens to get to get his insight on uh on, on the sabers and stuff too so you know i think anyway, he's still he, he's still playing he's still jamming away I'm pretty yes sure. he is you yeah. can catch tom askey he does some uh he does some he, we're gonna get him on the show and talk about his kick cap mars i mean it there, there's there's a lot we can talk to him about but he does i think uh i think he does a happy hour uh thing on facebook or something he does like a little acoustic 
singing yeah. or something. He's good. One, He's very good. One, one guy you don't shoot high up in warm ups, he'll chase you around with a stick if you shoot anywhere above the waist. Well, it's funny you bring that up because not even so much uh, T Bone, but I, I just, when I think about Roisy, I think about trash talk. I think about goofing around in the locker room, but within good taste and ripping on teammates within good taste. But when you would light up Ryan Miller in practice, <laughs> oh my God! Did you ever verbally abuse him <laughs> when you would go high glove, high oh, glove? Man. Oh my God! <laughs> what Hopefully you... that made him better. Hopefully that made him better. You know, like that's uh, that's what I was going for. Yeah, he just well. I never shot good. higher than his pads. You never shot I higher than his. pads? Ever shot higher than his pads? I was just the I was the confidence builder for uh, Roisey or for uh, for Millsy. It was just, I was at the point where, you know what? I saw him react to a guy shooting high <laughs> on him one time and he lost his marbles. And I was just like, whoa, this guy is lost him. This guy has literally lost it. You know, he was angry. And I would just, I just got to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to blow bullets, but they're all going to be down low. He well, I feel, I feel like, I feel like when you're, when you're playing with these guys in the minors and all, all coming up together, uh, you know, you could pick on guys a little bit more, right? Cause you're, oh, yeah. you've, you've played years when you're young all together and, um, nobody's up here and nobody's down there anymore. You're all on the same level, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it's funny you say that. I, I would have no problem whistling one right past Millsy's ear any day of the week. Mm-hmm. My first practice with New Jersey, my, I skate down on Berdur and I just kind of muffined one into his pads. <laughs> I, was, I was terrified to, I was terrified to maybe have it, you know, puck stand up and catch his collarbone or something or hit him in the head. That would have been just my luck. Derek Roy joining us here on the instigators. A, a question I ask players that retire uh, Roisey because I think as athletes, we will self-reflect whether it's today or a year from now or two years. I think with, with what we did for a living, I think we're always going to reflect on certain moments from our career. There's just, there's, there's no helping it. And I, I just wonder, are there things that, that you regret? Um, are there things that you wish maybe you had done uh, differently or gone somewhere or tried something or, or, you know, like what are your thoughts on that? Uh, no, nothing I, I regret. It's just a matter of like winning a Stanley cup was, you know, one of the things that you grow up doing, uh, in your backyard on the street, uh, outdoor ranks, you're lift hoisting, uh, a Stanley cup. And, um, you know, you're dreaming about it every night. And when you're growing up scoring the OT goal or whatnot and, and never got the chance to do that. So we were, so we were close two years in a row and made the conference finals and, um, you know, I think I had a five year span where we want, like went to the Memorial cup, won, won the Memorial cup and then a couple of years in Rochester in the conference finals. And then two years in a row in Buffalo conference finals. So it was like a five year span where I was playing until June, basically. So, um, you know, those lo- even losing, uh, in, in, the, um, Rochester stung, you know, like, you know, those, those are, those are things that you never get a chance to get back in. And uh, after Buffalo, you don't realize it when you're that young. You're like, okay, we'll get back there next year. Then we'll get back there the following year, yeah. you know, yeah. as opposed to I never had a sniff after that. I never even got close. So, um, you know, that that's that that stings. I think that that's not going to haunt me for the rest of my life or whatnot. And, but, can, I, uh, can, I ask, can I ask you something personal, like not too personal, but I've always wondered this about you specifically, Rosie. That injury on your knee that year, your patella tendon, how bad did that mess you up after? I mean, you, that, was a, that was a hard injury. Were you ever able to fully recover from that? Did your body feel the same? Yeah, the, well, what happened was um, it was tough. I've never been injured that long in my, my whole life at that point, right? So it's always the first, the first time you get injured like that, it's tough. You know, it's just mentally um, tough, and I think – um, I think I bounced back pretty good. And then um, I played that game seven uh, against. Yeah. yeah but that was that four. Game. Yeah. That was like four months after the injury, which should have been six months. It was usually about a six month recovery because I was two months in a mobilizer. Couldn't move my leg for two months. So for to be back in two months playing a playoff game seven is pretty crazy. Um, and 
no, nothing happened. I didn't re-injure it or anything. But that summer going into training, I felt like I was like, okay, hey, this is my summer. I need to, you know, get back into shape and get going and, and you know, have a really good season because I started off that year really good as well. And then the um, year you got hurt, you were having a career year. Yeah. So I was like, I'll get back to it. No problem. And then I got injured in the summer and then I got injured in training camp. So it was kind of like one of those snowballs where I had a disc in my back and then my shoulder came out in training camp. So it was like, it was one of those where it was just like, Oh my God, what's going on. So I don't know if, if that kicked in any time around that, that age, but it was just like um, three injuries within like six months. So it was just kind of like, bad luck but at the same time i don't know i don't know what happened but you know that's what happens sometimes in hockey it's just one injury snowballs into something else derek what what happened, when you play that long when you play as long as you did you are going to have injuries and that's that's when you know you you know for me it's like i you know i'm in, i'm almost like infatuated right now with uh alex ovechkin the guys yeah. played guys played a lot of games like over a thousand 1100 games he continues to score goals score goals he plays a an extremely physical brand of hockey and it's just like man you got to be almost you got to be a little bit lucky to stay away from the injuries 100%, 100%, yeah. right like a guy even a guy like patty marlowe i think it's crazy that he wants to come back for another year i was like what like doesn't make i'm looking i'm thinking about my body right now and i'm like how is so it's it's I think it's a little bit of luck and a, obviously a ton of work, you know. I, I think, I think, you I mix think genetically though, like I I have literally called Patrick Marlowe. He is a genetic freak. Six yeah. foot two, he's two hundred twenty five pounds. He's got great big huge legs and the butt and just everything is just like just perfect. And he takes care of himself very well off the ice. He trains yeah. exceptionally hard off the ice. You have to do so much, but you have to be lucky. You have to have luck involved. Well, how many times do you go in the corner with another guy? Like any time, any one of those times to, yeah. you know, you know, twist your knee or whatever. Yep. Like, and he so. didn't shy away. Patrick Marlowe, it's not like he wasn't shying away to, from the corners and stuff like that. But you appreciate these guys that we just talked about and how they're how they're still doing it. We only, we only have a few more minutes with you, Roisy. If, if, if I had known you were going to retire before you announced it, we could have scheduled a much longer much longer time with you but hey, impromptu you. this is great this is awesome no this this is great and i you know and and because we only have a few more minutes i i you know i i don't want to go with all the fun and 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 stories and stuff like that but but i really meant what i said i mean and i i know i echo craig's comments too when i tell you unbelievable career unbelievable career and you were an amazing teammate i mean you made the locker room a really fun place to be and you never took a shift off Roisy. I mean, you never, you never shied away from guys like Chara. I wish the Sabres now had the, some of the players had heart and stones like you had at your size because you, you were just fearless, man. And I love you. And it was, I'm so grateful that you were willing to come on today. Thanks, buddy. There's no other place I'd rather be right now, bud. Oh, I love Thanks you all the way from the me. back. We, we did Kangaroo Court and Junior to you when you were <laughs> – just a young, yeah. just a young, young rib. You should have seen this guy in junior, man. Six points he had against Owen Sound as a 15-year-old. All right? Don't worry, Roisy. I'll always remind the world how unbelievable hockey player you were, all right? <laughs> Any more kids on the way? Uh, we're thinking about it. I think... Uh, You're always you know, thinking about it, Roisy. It's always on your mind. It's a handful, I'll tell you that. So it's... Uh, but uh, How many but do you have now? Just one. <laughs> we got five seconds yeah. here, Roisy. You're the man. Long Buffalo, way to go, bud. Buffalo loves Love you. you. Buffalo loves you, man. One Bills Live is next. Thanks, Derek Roy. For